Hi, welcome back to Mechanical PE Exam Prep. This is Dan Malloy. We're going to be starting a series of problems from the 6-Minute Solutions book. These are really great because they're about the right length and difficulty level what you might actually see on the test. So in addition to the practice test and the practice problem book that comes with the MERM, these are really good examples. Some of the videos will probably go longer than 6 minutes because I'll talk through some of the alternate approaches and maybe why certain answer choices are not right, but um, you might fall for a different path. And all of the answer choices that are incorrect are actually viable if you make one different assumption. So uh, there'll be situations like that. But for the most part, we'll just uh, go straight to the right approach and, and go through them. So let's get started with the first one. Refrigerant 22 is isentropically compressed from a saturated vapor condition at 68.5 PSIG to 185 PSIG. The total change in temperature of the vapor is most nearly what? And most of these problems give a hint as well. So if you couldn't tell by the chart, we're gonna look up the pressure enthalpy diagram for R22 in the MERM, locate the entropy of the saturated vapor curve, and then follow a constant entropy process line until it intercepts the final pressure condition line. So if you want to uh, not read the hints, that's that's something you can try and then use them when you need to. Um, I think the more information, the better, because that's the process of studying. So I wouldn't shy away or you know deprive yourself from looking at the hints as you're going through these. There'll be plenty of other practice problems to reinforce things if, if you're just getting started with your studying. So for this one, this, uh, this chart I found in the MERM from Appendix 23L which is the pressure enthalpy diagram for R22. And then one of the things we want to recognize right off the bat is these pressures have be give, been given as gauge pressures. So the chart actually calls for absolute pressures, PSIA. So we have to add 14.7, which is atmospheric pressure. So the actual formula for that would be P absolute equals P gauge plus P atmosphere. So let's do that for each one of these. I'll call this P1 and this P2. So P1 equals 68.5 plus 14.7. And P2 equals 185 plus 14.7. P1 is 83.2. Now that's PSIA. And P2 is 199.7. And to identify any point on a refrigeration diagram, we need to know two things about that state. So for state one, we know the pressure. And the other fact that we have is that it's a saturated vapor. So we're gonna find it right on the outside of this curve, on the right side where the saturated vapor is. So let's go ahead and spot that point. So 83 is a little more than 80, so this is 50, 60, 70, 80. It's the second line from the top. And it's right on the edge of the bell. So that's about right here. And that's state one. And then to find state two, we know the pressure is 200 PSI, and we know that it gets there by isentropic compression. So it's a higher pressure, but it takes a line of constant entropy. So on this diagram, we have these lines that run like this. The S equals some BTU per pound mass Rankine. These are the lines of constant entropy. So let's follow that line up, and we're going to stop at 200. So this is logarithmic. We have 100. This is 150, 200, 250, 300, 350, 400. So we want to be right here, and we want constant entropy. So that's going to take us to about right here. It's hard to be real precise with this chart, but let's zoom in now. So that's state two. And our process then looks like that. It's a compression process. And it just so happens that on this chart, we have lines of constant temperature given in this direction. So the temperature for state one is 40 degrees Fahrenheit. We can pull that right off the chart. And then for state two, it's about 120 degrees Fahrenheit. So based on that, the delta T is gonna be the difference between the two, which is 120 minus 40, which is 80 degrees Fahrenheit. That's answer C. So this one was really easy to do off of the diagram. You might be wondering, can we do this off of a table instead? There is a table for R22 in the MERM, which is the saturated vapor conditions, but you probably won't find information about state two, which is a superheated vapor after compression. So without being able to get your hands on 
more detailed refrigerant data for R22, it would be sort of difficult to figure this out. So the chart's definitely the way to go. And I think it's faster. I also think it's important to develop this intuition about what's the refrigeration cycle. So, you know, this is the compression process, then it's gonna go through the condenser and then the constant enthalpy process, and then it's ready to go through the evaporator and do the actual cooling that uh, refrigeration processes are meant to do. So hopefully that helps and I'll see you in the next video.